Section 12 of The Art of Cookery Made Plain and Easy by Hannah Glass. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 2, Part 8. Made Dishes. From To Roast a Calf's Liver. Lard it with bacon, spit it first, and roast it. Serve it up with good gravy. To Roast Partridges. Let them be nicely roasted, but not too much. Baste them gently with a little butter and drudge with flour. Sprinkle a little salt on and froth them nicely up. Have good gravy in the dish with bread sauce in a boat, made thus. Take about a handful or two of crumbs of bread, put in a pint of milk or more, a small whole onion, a little whole white pepper, a little salt, and a bit of butter. Boil it all well up. Then take the onion out and beat it well with a spoon. Take poveroy sauce in a boat, made thus. Chop four shallots fine, a gel of good gravy, and a spoonful of vinegar, a little pepper and salt. Boil them up one minute, then put it in a boat. To boil partridges. Boil them in a good deal of water. Let them boil quick. Fifteen minutes will be sufficient. For sauce, take a quarter of a pint of cream and a piece of fresh butter as big as a walnut. Stir it one way till it is melted and pour it into the dish. Or this sauce. Take a bunch of celery clean washed. Cut all the white very small. Wash it again very clean. Put it into a saucepan with a blade of mace, a little beaten pepper, and a very little salt. Put to it a pint of water. Let it boil till the water is just wasted away. Then add a quarter of a pint of cream and a piece of butter rolled in flour. Stir all together, and when it is thick and fine, pour it over the birds. Or this sauce. Take the livers and bruise them fine some parsley chopped fine, melt a little nice fresh butter, and then add the livers and parsley to it. Squeeze in a little lemon, just give it a boil, and pour over your birds. Or this sauce. Take a quarter of a pint of cream, the yolk of an egg beat fine, a little grated nutmeg, a little beaten mace, a piece of butter as big as a nutmeg, rolled in flour, and one spoonful of white wine. Stir all together one way. When fine and thick, pour it over the birds. You may add a few mushrooms. Or this sauce. Take a few mushrooms fresh peeled and wash them clean. Put them in a saucepan with a little salt. Put them over a quick fire. Let them boil up, then put in a quarter of a pint of cream and a little nutmeg. Shake them together with a very little piece of butter rolled in flour. Give it two or three shakes over the fire. Three or four minutes will do. Then pour it over the birds. Or this sauce. Boil half a pound of rice very tender in beef gravy. Season it with pepper and salt and pour over your birds. These sauces do for boiled fowls. A quart of gravy will be enough and let it boil till it is quite thick. To dress partridges a la braise. Take two brace, truss the legs into the bodies, lard them, season with beaten mace, pepper and salt. Take a stew pan, lay slices of bacon at the bottom, then slices of beef, and then slices of veal, all cut thin, a piece of carrot, an onion cut small, a bundle of sweet herbs, and some whole pepper. Lay the partridges with the breast downward. Lay some thin slices of beef and veal over them, and some parsley shred fine. Cover them and let them stew eight or ten minutes over a slow fire. Then give your pan a shake and pour in a pint of boiling water. Cover it close and let it stew half an hour over a little quicker fire. Then take out your birds, keep them hot, pour into the pan a pint of thin gravy, let them boil till there is about half a pint, then strain it off and skim off all the fat. In the meantime, have a veal sweetbread cut small, 
truffles and morels, cocks, combs and fowls' livers stewed in a pint of good gravy half an hour, some artichoke bottoms and asparagus tops, both blanched in warm water, and a few mushrooms. Then add the other gravy to this and put in your partridges to heat. If it is not thick enough, take a piece of butter rolled in flour and toss up in it. If you will be at the expense, thicken it with veal and ham cullis, but it will be full as good without. To make partridge pains. Take two roasted partridges and the flesh of a large fowl, a little parboiled bacon, a little marrow or sweet suet chopped very fine, a few mushrooms and morels chopped fine, truffles and artichoke bottoms, season with beaten mace, pepper, a little nutmeg, salt, sweet herbs chopped fine, and the crumb of a tuppenny loaf soaked in hot gravy. Mix all well together with the yolks of two eggs. Make your panes on paper of a round figure and the thickness of an egg at a proper distance one from another. Dip the point of a knife in the yolk of an egg in order to shape them. Bread them neatly and bake them a quarter of an hour in a quick oven. Observe that the truffles and morels be boiled tender in the gravy you soak the bread in. Serve them up for a side dish or they will serve to garnish the above dish, which will be a very fine one for a first course. Note, when you have cold fowls in the house, this makes a pretty addition in an entertainment. To roast pheasants. Pick and draw your pheasants and singe them. Lard one with bacon, but not the other. Spit them, roast them fine, and paper them all over the breast. When they are just done, flour and baste them with a little nice butter, and let them have a fine white froth. Then take them up, and pour good gravy in the dish, and bread sauce in boats or basins. Or, you may put watercresses with gravy in the dish, and lay the cresses under the pheasants. Or, you may make celery sauce, stewed tender, strained, and mixed with cream, and poured into the dish. If you have but one pheasant, take a large fowl about the bigness of a pheasant, pick it nicely with the head on, draw it, and truss it with the head turned as you do a pheasant's. Lard the fowl all over the breast and legs with bacon cut in little pieces. When roasted, put them both in a dish, and nobody will know it. They will take three quarters of an hour doing, as the fire must not be too brisk. Put gravy in the dish and garnish with watercresses. A stewed pheasant. Take your pheasant and stew it in veal gravy. Take artichoke bottoms parboiled, some chestnuts roasted and blanched. When your pheasant is enough, but it must stew till there is just enough for sauce, then skim it. Put in the chestnuts and artichoke bottoms, a little beaten mace, pepper and salt enough to season it, and a glass of white wine. If you do not think it thick enough, thicken it with a little piece of butter rolled in flour. Squeeze in a little lemon, pour the sauce over the pheasant, and have some forcemeat balls fried and put into the dish. Note, a good fowl will do full as well, trussed with the head on, like a pheasant. You may fry sausages instead of forcemeat balls. To dress a pheasant a la braise. Lay a layer of beef all over your pan, then a layer of veal, a little piece of bacon, a piece of carrot, an onion stuck with cloves, a blade or two of mace, a spoonful of pepper, black and white, and a bundle of sweet herbs. Then lay in the pheasant, lay a layer of veal, and then a layer of beef to cover it. Set it on the fire five or six minutes, then pour in two quarts of boiling gravy. Cover it close, and let it stew very softly an hour and a half. Then take up your pheasant, keep it hot, and let the gravy boil till there is about a pint. Then strain it off, and put it in again, and put in a veal sweetbread, first being stewed with the pheasant. 
then put in some truffles and morels, some livers of fowls, artichoke bottoms, and asparagus tops, if you have them. Let these simmer in the gravy about five or six minutes, then add two spoonfuls of ketchup, two of red wine, and a little piece of butter rolled in flour, a spoonful of browning, shake all together, put in your pheasant, let them stew all together with a few mushrooms about five or six minutes more. Then take up your pheasant and pour your ragu all over with a few forcemeat balls. Garnish with lemon. You may lard it if you choose. To boil a pheasant. Take a fine pheasant, boil it in a good deal of water, keep your water boiling. Half an hour will do a small one and three quarters of an hour a large one. Let your sauce be celery stewed and thickened with cream and a little piece of butter rolled in flour. Take up the pheasant and pour the sauce all over. Garnish with lemon. Observe to stew your celery so that the liquor will not be all wasted away before you put your cream in. If it wants salt, put in some to your palate. To Selmac a snipe or woodcock. Half roast them and cut them in quarters. Put them in a stew pan with a little gravy, two shallots chopped fine, a glass of red wine, a little salt and cayenne pepper, the juice of half a lemon. Stew them gently for ten minutes and put them on a toast, serve the same as for roasting, and send them up hot. Garnish with lemon. Snipes in a surtout or woodcocks. Take force meat made with veal, as much beef suet chopped, and beat in a mortar, with an equal quantity of crumbs of bread. Mix in a little beaten mace, pepper and salt, some parsley, and a little sweet herbs. Mix it with the yolk of an egg. Lay some of this meat round the dish. Then lay in the snipes, being first drawn and half roasted. Take care of the trail chop it and throw it all over the dish. Take some good gravy according to the bigness of your surtout, some truffles and morels, a few mushrooms, a sweetbread cut into pieces and artichoke bottoms cut small. Let all stew together, shake them and take the yolks of two or three eggs according as you want them, beat them up with a spoonful or two of white wine. Stir all together one way. When it is thick, take it off, let it cool, and pour it into the surtout. Have the yolks of a few hard eggs put in here and there. Season with beaten mace, pepper and salt, to your taste. Cover it with the forcemeat all over. Rub the yolks of eggs all over to colour it, then send it to the oven. Half an hour does it, and send it hot to table. To boil snipes or woodcocks. Boil them in a good strong broth or beef gravy made thus. Take a pound of beef, cut it into little pieces, put it into two quarts of water, an onion, a bundle of sweet herbs, a blade or two of mace, six cloves, and some whole pepper. Cover it close, let it boil till about half wasted, then strain it off. Put the gravy into a saucepan with salt enough to season it. Take the snipes and gut them clean, but take care of the guts. Put them into the gravy and let them boil. Cover them close and ten minutes will boil them. In the meantime, chop the guts and liver small. Take a little of the gravy the snipes are boiling in and stew the guts in with a blade of mace. Take some crumbs of bread and have them ready fried in a little fresh butter crisp of a fine light brown. You must take about as much bread as the inside of a stale roll and rub them small into a clean cloth. When they are done, let them stand ready in a plate before the fire. When your snipes are ready, take about half a pint of the liquor they are boiled in and add to the guts two spoonfuls of red wine and a piece of butter as big as a walnut rolled in a little flour. Set them on the fire, shake your saucepan often, but do not stir it with a spoon till the butter is all melted. Then put in the crumbs, 
give your saucepan a shake, take up your birds, lay them in the dish, and pour this sauce over them. Garnish with lemon. To dress autolands. Spit them sideways with a vine leaf between, baste them with butter, and have fried crumbs of bread round the dish. Dress quails the same way. To dress ruffs and reefs. These birds are found in Lincolnshire and the Isle of Ely. The food proper for them is new milk boiled and put over white bread with a little fine sugar. And be careful to keep them in separate cages. They feed very fast and will die of their fat if not killed in time. Trust them as you do a woodcock, but draw them and cover them with vine leaves. To dress larks. Put them on a bird spit, tie them on another spit, and roast them twenty-five minutes with a gentle fire. Put them in a dish with crumbs of bread fried brown, or you may put a toast under with gravy and butter, or gravy only. To dress plovers. To two plovers, take two artichoke bottoms boiled, some chestnuts roasted and blanched, some skirrets boiled, Cut all very small, mix with it some marrow or beef suet, the yolks of two hard eggs, chop all together, season with pepper and salt, nutmeg and a little sweet herbs, fill the bodies of the plovers, lay them in a saucepan, put to them a pint of gravy, a glass of white wine, a blade or two of mace, some roasted chestnuts blanched, and artichoke bottoms cut into quarters, two or three yolks of eggs, and a little juice of lemon. Cover them close, and let them stew very softly an hour. If you find the sauce is not thick enough, take a piece of butter rolled in flour, and put into the sauce. Shake it round, and when it is thick, take up your plovers, and pour the sauce over them. Garnish with roasted chestnuts. Ducks are very good, done this way. If they are well fed, they need no butter, being fat enough of themselves. Or boil them in good celery sauce, either white or brown, just as you like. The same way you may dress widgeons. Note well, the best way to dress plovers is to roast them the same as woodcocks, with a toast under them and gravy and butter. To dress larks, pear fashion. You must truss the larks close, and cut off the legs, season them with salt, pepper, cloves and mace. Make a force meat thus. Take a veal sweetbread, as much beef suet, a few morels and mushrooms, chop all fine together, some crumbs of bread and a few sweet herbs, a little lemon peel cut small, mix all together with the yolk of an egg. Wrap up the larks in forcemeat and shape them like a pear. Stick one leg in the top like the stalk of a pear. Rub them over with the yolk of an egg and crumbs of bread. Bake them in a gentle oven. Serve them without sauce, or they make a good garnish to a very fine dish. You may use veal if you have not a sweetbread. Jugged hare. Cut it into little pieces. Lard them here and there with little slips of bacon, season them with cayenne pepper and salt, put them into an earthen jug with a blade or two of mace, an onion stuck with cloves, and a bundle of sweet herbs. Cover the jug or jar that you do it in so close that nothing can get in, then set it in a pot of boiling water, and three hours will do it. Then turn it out into the dish, and take out the onion and sweet herbs, and send it to table hot. If you do not like it larded, leave it out. Florendine Hair Let your hair be full grown, and let it hang four or five days before you case it. Leave the ears on, and take out all the bones except the head, which must be left whole. Lay the hair on the dresser, and put in the following forcemeat. Take the crumbs of a penny loaf, the liver shred fine, half a pound of fat bacon scraped, a glass of red wine, some sweet herbs chopped fine, 
season with pepper, salt and nutmeg, an anchovy chopped fine, the yolks of two eggs, mix all together and put into your hare's belly, roll it up to the head, skewer it with the head and ears leaning back, and tie it with pack thread as you would a collar of veal. Wrap it in a cloth and boil it one hour and a half in a stew pan covered close with two quarts of water. As soon as the liquor is reduced to a quart, add a pint of red wine, a spoonful of lemon pickle, one of ketchup, and one of browning. Then take out your hair and stew the gravy till it is reduced to a pint. Thicken it with butter rolled in flour. Put the hair in the dish and pour the sauce over it. Pull the jaw bones out and put them in the eyes. Put some forcemeat balls and truffles round it and garnish with watercresses. To scare a hare. Lard a hare and put a pudding in the belly. Put it into a pot or fish kettle. Then put to it two quarts of strong drawn gravy, one of red wine, a whole lemon cut, a faggot of sweet herbs, nutmeg, pepper, a little salt and six cloves. Cover it close and stew it over a slow fire till it is three parts done. Then take it up, put it into a dish and strew it over with crumbs of bread, sweet herbs chopped fine, some lemon peel grated and half a nutmeg. Set it before the fire and baste it till it is of a fine light brown. In the meantime, take the fat off your gravy and thicken it with the yolk of an egg. Take six eggs boiled hard and chopped small. Some pickled cucumbers cut very thin. Mix these with the sauce and pour it into the dish. A fillet of mutton or neck of venison may be done the same way. Note, you may do rabbits the same way, but it must be veal gravy and white wine adding mushrooms for cucumbers. To stew a hare. Cut it into pieces and put it into a stew pan with a blade or two of mace, some whole pepper, black and white, an onion stuck with cloves, a bundle of sweet herbs and a nutmeg cut to pieces and cover it with water. Cover the stew pan close. Let it stew till the hare is tender but not too much done. Then take it up and with a fork take out the hare into a clean pan, strain the sauce through a coarse sieve, empty all out of the pan, put in the hare again with the sauce, take a piece of butter as big as a walnut rolled in flour, and put in likewise one spoonful of ketchup and a gill of red wine. Stew all together with a few fresh mushrooms, or pickled ones if you have any, till it is thick and smooth, then dish it up and send it to table. You may cut a hare in two and stew the four quarters thus, and roast the hind quarters with a pudding in the belly. A hare civet. Bone the hare and take out all the sinews. Cut one half in thin slices and the other half in pieces an inch thick. Flour them and fry them in a little fresh butter as collops quick and have ready some gravy made good with the bones of the hare and beef. Put a pint of it into the pan to the hare, some mustard and a little elder vinegar. Cover it close and let it do softly till it is as thick as cream, then dish it up with the head in the middle. Portuguese Rabbits I have in the beginning of my book given directions for boiled and roasted. Get some rabbits, truss them chicken fashion, the head must be cut off and the rabbit turned with its back upwards, and two of the legs stripped to the claw end and so trussed with two skewers. Lard them and roast them with what sauce you please. If you want chickens and they are to appear as such, they must be dressed in this manner. Send them up hot with gravy in the dish and garnish with lemon and beetroot. Rabbits Surprise Roast two half-grown rabbits, cut off the heads close to the shoulders and the first joints, then take off all the lean meat from the backbones, 
cut it small and toss it up with six or seven spoonfuls of cream and milk and a piece of butter as big as a walnut rolled in flour a little nutmeg and a little salt shake all together till it is as good as thick cream and set it to cool then make a forcemeat with a pound of veal a pound of suet as much crumbs of bread two anchovies a little piece of lemon peel cut fine a little sprig of thyme and a little nutmeg grated let the veal and suet be chopped very fine and beat in a mortar then mix it all together with the yolks of two raw eggs place it all round the rabbits leaving a long trough in the backbone open that you think will hold the meat you cut out with the sauce pour it in and cover it with the force meat smooth it all over with your hand as well as you can with a raw egg square at both ends throw on a little grated bread and butter a mazarine or pan and take them from the dresser where you form them and place them on it very carefully bake them three quarters of an hour till they are of a fine brown colour let your sauce be gravy thickened with butter and the juice of a lemon lay them into the dish and pour in the sauce garnish with an orange cut into quarters and serve it up for a first course to dress rabbits in casserole divide the rabbits into quarters you may lard them or let them alone just as you please shake some flour over them and fry them with lard or butter then put them into an earthen pipkin with a quart of good broth a glass of white wine a little pepper and salt if wanted a bunch of sweet herbs and a piece of butter as big as a walnut rolled in flour cover them close and let them stew half an hour then dish them up and pour the sauce over them garnish with seville orange cut into thin slices and notched the peel that is cut out lay prettily between the slices mutton kebobbed take a loin of mutton and joint it between every bone season it with pepper and salt moderately grate a small nutmeg all over dip them in the yolks of three eggs and have ready crumbs of bread and sweet herbs dip them in and clap them together in the same shape again and put it on a small spit roast them before a quick fire set a dish under and baste it with a little piece of butter and then keep basting with what comes from it and throw some crumbs of bread and sweet herbs all over them as it is roasting when it is enough take it up lay it in the dish and have ready half a pint of good gravy and what comes from it take two spoonfuls of ketchup and mix a teaspoonful of flour with it and put to the gravy stir it together and give it a boil and pour over the mutton note you must observe to take off all the fat of the inside and the skin of the top of the meat and some of the fat if there be too much when you put in what comes from your meat into the gravy observe to pour out all the fat a neck of mutton called the hasty dish take a large pewter or silver dish made like a deep soup dish with an edge about an inch deep on the inside on which the lid fixes with an handle at top so fast that you may lift it up full by that handle without falling this dish is called a necromancer take a neck of mutton about six pounds take off the skin cut it into chops not too thick slice a french roll thin peel and slice a very large onion pare and slice three or four turnips lay a row of mutton in the dish on that a row of roll and then a row of turnips and then onions a little salt then the meat and so on put in a little bundle of sweet herbs and two or three blades of mace have a tea kettle of water boiling fill the dish and cover it close hang the dish on the back of two chairs by the rim have ready three sheets of brown paper tear each sheet into five pieces and draw them through your hand light one piece and hold it under the bottom of the dish moving the paper about as fast as the paper burns light another till all is burnt 
and your meat will be enough. Fifteen minutes just does it. Send it to table hot in the dish. Note, this dish was first contrived by Mr. Rich, and is much admired by the nobility. To make a curry the Indian way. Take two small chickens, skin them, and cut them as for a fricassee. Wash them clean, and stew them in about a quart of water for about five minutes. Then strain off the liquor, and put the chickens in a clean dish. Take three large onions, chop them small, and fry them in about two ounces of butter. Then put in the chickens, and fry them together till they are brown. Take a quarter of an ounce of turmeric, a large spoonful of ginger and beaten pepper together, and a little salt to your palate. Strew all these ingredients over the chickens whilst frying. Then pour in the liquor, and let it stew about half an hour. Then put in a quarter of a pint of cream, and the juice of two lemons, and serve it up. The ginger, pepper, and turmeric must be beat very fine to boil rice put two quarts of water to a pint of rice let it boil till you think it is done enough then throw in a spoonful of salt and turn it out into a colander then let it stand about five minutes before the fire to dry and serve it up in a dish by itself dish it up and send it to table the rice in a dish by itself to make a pillow the Indian way. Take three pounds of rice, pick and wash it very clean. Put it into a colander and let it drain very dry. Take three quarters of a pound of butter and put it into a pan over a very slow fire till it melts. Then put in the rice and cover it over very close that it may keep all the steam in. Add to it a little salt, some whole pepper, half a dozen blades of mace, and a few cloves. You must put in a little water to keep it from burning, then stir it up very often, and let it stew till the rice is soft. Boil two fowls and a fine piece of bacon of about two pounds weight as common. Cut the bacon in two pieces, lay it in the dish with the fowls, cover it over with the rice, and garnish it with about half a dozen hard eggs, and a dozen of onions fried whole and very brown. Note, this is the true Indian way of dressing them. Another way to make a pillow. Take a leg of veal about 12 or 14 pounds weight, an old cock skinned, chop both to pieces, Put it into a pot with five or six blades of mace, some whole white pepper, and three gallons of water, half a pound of bacon, two onions, and six cloves. Cover it close, and when it boils, let it do very softly till the meat is good for nothing, and above two-thirds wasted, then strain it. The next day, put this soup into a saucepan with a pound of rice, set it over a very slow fire, Take great care it do not burn. When the rice is very thick and dry, turn it into a dish. Garnish with hard eggs cut in two, and have roasted fowls in another dish. Note, you are to observe, if your rice simmers too fast, it will burn when it comes to be thick. It must be very thick and dry, and the rice not boiled to a mummy. To make essence of ham Take a ham and cut off all the fat, cut the lean in thin pieces, and lay them in the bottom of your stew pan. Put over them six onions sliced, two carrots and one parsnip, two or three leeks, a few fresh mushrooms, a little parsley and sweet herbs, four or five shallots, and some cloves and mace. Put a little water at the bottom, set it on a gentle stove till it begins to stick. Then put in a gallon of veal broth to a ham of 14 pounds, more or less broth according to the size of the ham. Let it stew very gently for one hour, then strain it off and put it away for use. Rules to be observed in all made dishes. First, that the stew pans or saucepans and covers be very clean, free from sand and well tinned. 
and that all the white sauces have a little tartness and be very smooth and of a fine thickness and all the time any white sauce is over the fire keep stirring it one way and as to brown sauce take great care no fat swims at the top but that it be all smooth alike and about as thick as good cream and not to taste of one thing more than another as to pepper and salt season to your palate but do not put too much of either for that will take away the fine flavour of everything as to most made dishes you may put in what you think proper to enlarge it or make it good as mushrooms pickled dried fresh or powdered truffles morels coxcombs stewed ox palates cut in small bits artichoke bottoms either pickled fresh boiled or dried ones softened in warm water each cut in four pieces asparagus tops the yolks of hard eggs forcemeat balls etc the best things to give a sauce tartness are mushroom pickle white walnut pickle elder vinegar or lemon juice end of section 12